So, but accepting that, do we then have to still assume this attitude, even if we don't say it in Nick's case, and certainly Gary does say this, but, you know, we're basically homeless. The whole universe is out to get us because it's a, it's a blind machine that likes to, to kill and fuck, and that's all it ever has done, and unless our, our, I don't know, our intelligence, which I'm not sure after a year of talking to Gary what exactly the intelligence is but the intelligence is the only thing that can get us out of this shitting fucking killing fest uh, this bloodbath um, and provide us a suitable home to live in because until now we've been homeless as far as as far as Gary's concerned and Gary feels homeless now because there's not a world that respects him and his values uh, in existence, um, but I think under it all, I mean, I guess Nick, you, you do accept the uh, the idea that selflessness is human nature, um, empathy is human nature, and that we sort of have to be uh, taught to value competition more so than cooperation. Uh, it's something that's drilled into us, not something we readily. Uh, express from the inside out um, so you're 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 a bit more hopeful I think and uh, that's good but you still in, in a cosmic sense you're not willing I don't think or at least you don't like to talk about the greater purpose the non-human nature that which religion used to uh, connect us with but which you know for the last four three or four hundred years since science and technology really took over and industrialization and capitalism and consumerism and all these things really began. Middle class people able to live in nice homes and have nice things and so forth. Um, that got us kind of sidetracked and we forgot about this relationship to the ultimate that humans have had for, you know, the hundreds of thousands of years that we've been homo sapiens sapien and probably from millions of years before that is just you know homo erectus and homo habilis and they had to have had some tribal relationship between each other and the world that they lived in uh, they had to make sense somehow of the patterns that they knew they were a part of um, you know the sun and the stars and the moon they saw this they recognized it they had to understand it and they didn't have many options as far as what kind of story to tell. We still have to tell that story today, even if we do it scientifically. We have to relate ourselves to the world, otherwise we go crazy, and we have gone crazy, uh, I think. And so maybe we do need this greater cosmic purpose. Maybe we do need to uh, find ourselves at home in the universe and not feel like we have no parents, and like we're an accident with, you know, just a determined playing out of the gear work that doesn't have any creative abilities or potentials. Um, I don't think we have to see it that way. Um, because, you know, science tells us about this whole thing, you know, assuming it's just matter in motion happens accidentally. They tell us, well, yeah, just, you know, exploded. 13.7 billion years ago and now it came that's that's just what happened that's where we came from it's kind of like we're homeless you know um, and you know mystical people will say oh so that's birth right so the universe must have a, a, a father mother right it must have parents and the scientist says well yo, you know you're comparing something here on earth that we're very familiar with with something completely unknown and it's an improper metaphor but you, you know do we really understand how a baby is born I mean, we see it every day, sure, but do we understand how that happens? How a person grows from a single cell and becomes alive and has hopes and dreams and fears, uh, has, you know, relationships and meanings and creates art and literature and technology and understands it, at least in, in the better moments, the more conscious moments, uh, how does that happen? We don't understand that. A universe comes from nothing in the form of a person coming from an egg, a fertilized egg. We don't really, I mean, we recognize that it's a very regular process 
you know, babies are born all the time, yeah, it works great, it's perfect, it's a wonderfully designed machine, though, you know, the designer is, of course, just mutation, natural selection, there's no need for anything else, right? Um, but that doesn't explain it to us, that doesn't explain it, that, you know, is a, a very narrow description that is true in the standard uh, scientific meaning of the word. It fits the data, but again, we create the data based on the perspective that we decide to take on the world, based on the theory that we impose on nature. If our theory is that DNA mutation and natural selection account for all the evolutionary forms we find today, then we will believe that, and we will find evidence to support it. But. Um, doesn't necessarily mean it's true. It just means it's not wrong. <laughs>